Greg Wells, you just spoke to the uh, Association of Ohio Pedologists, and your topic was emergency watershed protection. Yep. What is that and why is it important? Sure. So I'm Greg Wells. I'm the area engineer for basically South Central Ohio for USDA, uh, the NRCS, Natural Resources Conservation Service. And EWP, or Emergency Watershed Protection Program, is a program that we administer to help some of our local communities uh, recover from storm damage. Most of the time it's flooding events. Uh, so it's a program where we work with uh, townships or county engineer or uh, villages or whomever it may be uh, to help them put in stream bank stabilization uh, to protect roads or bridges or uh, other utilities and infrastructure that might be threatened or jeopardized uh, as a result of storm damage and bank erosion. Um, I suspect in most of these instances, the county engineer or township trustees are aware of the problem and so they ask you to come in and help. Correct. Yep. Most of the time that's how it starts is that they will come and ask us for assistance through the program. Uh, sometimes if it's a major storm event, uh, FEMA might, might become involved. They might be surveying damage in the area and FEMA might refer them to us as well. In a major storm event, a federally declared disaster, we work hand in hand with FEMA to administer our program and figure out who's, who's helping repair what. Sites. So. Can private property owners ask you for uh, to come in for a situation that's only on their land? They can, however, it's very, very rare that we do work that's just on private property. Uh, you have to have a local sponsor or a local unit of government that agrees to uh, pay that local share, that 25% share of the cost of the work. And in most cases, uh, a local township or a unit of government isn't going to uh, agree to pay that 25% cost if it's work or damage that's on private property. So just about all work we do involves damage to a road uh, or something similar. And what are some of your solutions, the tools that you use? Sure. So we have a number of different uh, types of repairs that uh, we implement to, again, provide bank stabilization and, and perhaps uh, build a retaining wall uh, and, and put that stream bank back where it should be. Um, Gabion baskets that I talked about today are, are one of our popular tools. Sometimes it might just be riprap uh, or grouted riprap, and then occasionally the, we... The gabion are uh, essentially wire cages of riprap? Exactly. Gabions are basically wire cages uh, that are stacked like bricks and then filled with rocks. So they pr provide one big mass uh, of stone that's, that's in a retaining wall type shape. Uh, inside the cages. Yep. And then we do other hard hard repairs too, like different types of piling uh, and sometimes even concrete walls on occasion. Yep. And you mentioned uh, the gabions, sometimes those will accumulate soil and so after a while you get vegetation, yep. won't look like an industrial site. Right, exactly. So a lot of these repairs might be considered hard repairs, um, but we did talk about that today, that over time, even those gabions, uh, sometimes even the riprap, they will get sediment and soil that accumulate on them after subsequent rain and storm events, and they will actually yeah, revegetate. So that oftentimes, uh, 10 or 15 years after we build one of these repairs, you don't even know that they're there. You uh, mentioned a few storm events. The big one was in 2011 that you had a lot of responses. Yep, yep. 2011 was uh, in May. Uh, that was just a big isolated line of thunderstorms that moved through in May that caused a lot of flash flooding. And then our most recent one was in February of 2019. I think there was 10 or 12 counties that were declared FEMA federal disaster areas along the Ohio River and in adjacent counties. That was a storm that was in February, so it was just a, a larger rain event that happened when the soils are already saturated or frozen. But you'll generally have a, a disaster declaration which will allow right. you to act and get funding. Correct. Uh, with a disaster declaration, uh, we automatically jump into EWP mode and look for sites. If there's no disaster declaration, if it's a smaller isolated storm, uh, we may not always get funding right away, um, but we can decide if we want to take on the projects and then uh, maybe go on a wait list for funding to, to try to get them repaired whenever funding is available. And some of the uh, solutions you showed, you actually rebuilt the entire stream channel. It was a small stream, maybe right. 20 feet wide. Right. What kind of regulation does that involve going through, like sure. Army Corps of Engineers? Sure, yep. So we always have to get Army Corps of Engineers uh, permits. There's a nationwide permit that applies to EWP work. Uh, and then along with that, you also have to get uh, Ohio EPA permitting, a 401 water quality permit from Ohio EPA. 
Uh, and then in some counties, they also have local floodplain permits that we have to uh, obtain because you're doing work within the floodplain. Um, but permitting, yeah, sometimes it's a challenge for us to get the permits in order, um, but that is something that we have to deal with on every site. Yeah. All right. How can people learn more and where are you located? Sure. So I'm located here in Chillicothe uh, in the local USCA service center, but I cover 18 counties in, in southeast Ohio. Um, if you go onto the USDA NRCS website, uh, we should have a program page that's for the EWP program that would list uh, more details about the program and I think we even have an EWP recovery plan for the state that kind of outlines the process uh, if somebody wanted to investigate it more and give him a look. And you're here in the service center next to the soil water office. Yep, next to the soil and water office, our, our office is here uh, in the back hallway. Yep. All right, Greg Wells speaking on emergency watershed protection with the uh, uh, Association of Ohio Pedologists. Thank you very much. Thank you.